Well, good morning, Baseline Church family. I just want to welcome you to this morning's digital gathering. I am really glad that you are participating with us online. And I just really believe that the Lord has a word for our community this morning and wants to encourage each one of us exactly as we are and where we are today. Um, but before we jump in to this morning, I just want to remind you that we will be hopping on Zoom at 11 a.m. this morning. So if you're watching this live at 10, I just want to invite you to uh, join us on Zoom. We will be taking communion together. We'll have some space just to um, hear from each other and encourage one another. Um, and it's been a really meaningful time. So whether you've been a part of this in the past or not, uh, just hit that link, uh, which is uh, right below in the description on YouTube. Or if you're on the worship guide, it's right below uh, this video. Uh, click that link and join us at 11. And I was just thinking, um, you know, if there's someone that you haven't seen in a while, um, or someone that you know is a part of our community, but you haven't seen them on one of these Zoom calls, just shoot them a text. Uh, invite them to hop on, even if they're not uh, participating in our digital gathering. Um, I just encourage you to invite someone. You could even copy the paste, copy and paste the link from the description and just send it over to them. Um, so come on to that at 11. We'll be excited to see you there. But before we enter into uh, a time of singing worship, I just want to share a passage uh, with us this morning to sort of frame our time, which is from Isaiah 55. And it's actually uh, one of the readings from the lectionary for this Sunday. But rather than just reading these words over you, um, I thought it would be special if all of us, as a way of participating as a community, uh, would would actually read them uh, wherever you are. If you're in your kitchen or living room or bedroom um, or outside, whether you're alone or with your family, uh, I'd encourage you to read this passage together. So grab a phone if you have a Bible app or if you have an analog Bible on hand, uh, grab that and it's Isaiah 55 verses 1 to 3. So I'm going to give us a little space uh, to read that together. I'll also have the words up here on the screen as well. And then uh, we'll enter into the time of singing together. Me 
seems to hide his face I rest on his unchanging grace In every high and stormy gale My anchor holds within the veil Oh, Christ the solid rock I stand All other ground is sinking sand
everything I need in Christ is enough for me Christ is enough for me everything I need is in you everything before you this morning just asking that you would meet us exactly as we are I pray that 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 word from that song would be how we live that we would cling to the reality that you are enough you are our firm foundation our anchor our refuge our rock so I pray that even a moment of singing would remind us of what's true. We love you, God. Amen. Well, hello, Baseline family. It's uh, great to have you join us uh, once again on our uh, virtual worship service here. And, um, you know, we, uh, we realize that these are really difficult days. And um, what our hope is is by gathering together on Sundays and by doing what we do during the week that it's helping us to uh, see how, what does it mean to live by faith in these days. And, and that's a little bit more about what we'll um, talk about today. Also today, uh, today's a communion Sunday. So if you are watching this on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, there will be a Zoom call and we'll all take uh, communion together. So uh, make sure you uh, prepare for that. And also, I just want to remind you of the assignments I gave you last week, right? So the assignments were to read the book of Philippians at least once all the way through. And I've heard of some folks doing that. Second thing was to uh, contact somebody from Baseline that you just miss. Let them tell, tell them that you miss them, catch up, see how they're doing. 
And the third thing was to begin to memorize Paul's prayer in um, Philippians 1, verses 9 to 11, which is just a great prayer to pray over our, yourself, your family, friends, and, and our church. Um, so I hope you've been doing those this week. I, I actually got a call from somebody uh, this week that said, hey, I just was heard your sermon and I thought of somebody to call and I thought of you. And so they called me and it was just great to, to talk and encouragement for me. So today we are going to continue in our study in Philippians. So we're still in chapter one, but we'll be starting at verse 12. So um, here's how Paul goes. It says, now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it's become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I'm in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. So uh, just a little bit about the context of this letter. We didn't talk about that much, but um, the church in Philippi has probably written a letter to Paul and they have sent it with a man named um, Epaphroditus. And Epaphroditus has brought this letter to him along with um, probably food and money and some support for uh, Paul. Um, when you were put in prison, as Paul has been, and you are put in chains, as he says, you literally are um, chained to a Roman soldier and you are responsible for your, um, for your own uh, needs your food, uh, clothing, anything like that, you're responsible. The state doesn't provide that. Your friends and family have to provide that. And so that's part of what the Philippian church was doing, was uh, bringing this so that they could give this to him to help him. But they also are just concerned. They're really concerned about how his ministry's going because he's been arrested, he's been put in prison, and they're thinking, Paul, we know this isn't what you expected or wanted, and, and how, how's it going? How is this, what's happening? And then Paul actually says that what has happened to him has actually happened to advance the gospel, right? He says, um, what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. Um, that, that word that is translated at advance is a really interesting Greek word. Um, it actually means to, uh, to cut before. And it was used to uh, describe um, an army of um, pioneer woodcutters who would go before the regular army. If they came up to a forest and there was no way through the forest, these woodcutters would go in and just slice away through the forest for the army to get through. They're, they're making a way for the army to get to where they have to go. And, and it's such a beautiful picture of what, how Paul sees what has happened to him. He doesn't see his lack or his limitations of being uh, in chains and in prison as keeping him from um, ministry and, and the gospel, but they're actually helping him with what he desires to do. And while he's imprisoned in Rome, again, most scholars believe that he wrote the books of Philippians, Colossians, and Ephesians, and Philemon. And if you are chained to a Roman soldier, as he would have been for 24 hours, uh, six hour shifts, four different soldiers coming through, he has a captive audience. And as he said, everybody knows why I'm here. Everybody knows that I'm in chains for Christ because he's telling this guard all about Jesus. And so this has not been a limitation or a lack to him. This is something that has helped him to actually share the gospel and to minister to people. And um, Paul then goes on to say that um, some people are sharing the gospel out of pure motives. Uh, some people are sharing the gospel out of impure motives because they believe that it will co possibly cause Paul more harm while he's in prison. But, but look at this beautiful statement he makes in verse 18. He says, but what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. It doesn't matter what the motives are. He doesn't care if it makes his life more difficult. All that matters to him is that Christ is preached. 
and, I, and Paul, I believe, in, in this section with those words, gives us a really important spiritual truth for our time, for, for, for what we're going through in these days. And that is to experience life with big picture faith. Big picture faith. How do you do that? It's, it's really hard to do, right? Because we can get so wrapped up in our own circumstances, our own limitations, our own hurts, uh, whatever it might be, and our discouragements and our disappointments. And, and we can miss the big picture if that's all we're focusing on. Kind of the woe is me, life is so terrible for me, why this happened to me. And, and I don't want to in any way downplay the loss that many of us have experienced. I mean, lots of people have experienced loss of life, uh, possibly a loss of job or loss of security. Um, people have had loss of um, graduations and proms and all sorts of celebrations. And so there definitely is that type of loss. And, and the fact that we are um, basically in house quarantine these days still can feel like a loss and a limitation. But imagine if, if Paul had just focused on himself and feeling bad about the circumstances he was in. I mean, we wouldn't have those four books of the Bible that he wrote. The gospel might not have gone into Rome as it did because he had those guards that he was speaking to. And so Paul has taken a big picture look at life. And, and to do that, you have to take a step back, right? And, and a, take a step up and, and see things bigger than just your own situation. He doesn't allow his lack or his limitations to keep him from doing what he believes God wants him to do. He takes a big picture. And, and for Paul, all that matters is for leaning into Jesus Christ and knowing, trusting, and loving him more, and that as many people as possible would have a chance to hear the gospel. That is what it means to have a big picture faith. And, and there have been people throughout the history of Christianity, uh, people that have had to overcome great obstacles, great uh, limitations and lacks, and they've not allowed those to keep them from doing what God wants them to do. Um, one person is someone that we looked at a couple of summers ago, a woman named uh, Johnny Erickson Tata. Uh, you might remember as a teenager, she jumped into a lake, hit the bottom, was paralyzed, had a, ran had a few very difficult years dealing with that, but came out of that with an incredible faith in God and a, an incredible purpose that God wants to use her. And so she learned how to paint, she learned how to write, she uh, sp speaks and she started her own ministries for um, special needs kids and young adults. And it's in, she's an incredible woman of God. Uh, another person is a, a man named um, Nick uh, Vujicic, and um, Nick was born in um, 1982 in Melbourne, Australia, and he was born without arms or legs. And the sonograms that his parents saw of the pregnancy, no one noticed anything was wrong with the pregnancy, and yet he was born without arms and legs. And um, again, a very difficult situation, but Nick says, because of the um, support and faith of his parents, because of friends, and because of his own faith in God, he was able to kind of overcome these limitations that he has, overcome the circumstances that he had been dealt with, and he became an incredible um, evangelist for God. He started speaking when he was age 19 and going to prisons and schools and churches and even large stadiums to talk about his faith as one who is taking on the limitations he's had in a really powerful and positive way. And he actually started his own ministry called Life Without Limbs. And they have a, um, a goal that they want to share the gospel with one billion people by the year 2028. And so these, these two and many others are just people that have, have seen their have not allowed the circumstances and the limitations to keep them from expressing the gospel, but have actually leaned into their lack, leaned into their limitations, and are using it to share the gospel. And I think all of us probably feel like we have some type of lack or limitation in our lives, especially now, right? If 
with all the coronavirus stuff and the limitations we have, we can be feeling like, well, I don't really think I could do much right now. I'm not sure that God can use me right now. And what I'd really encourage us to do is this, is to have a, a big picture faith. And, and to do that, it, part of it is, is to look back and to look back and, and see the faithfulness of God in your past and where he's been at work in your life in the past. Um, take a look at your present situation and see how God is speaking to you and, and, and maybe what he's uh, wanting you to do and where he wants you to grow. But it's mostly about looking ahead to see what could the future hold and what does God want to do with me moving ahead. Taking the limitations I have, taking the lack in who I am, but God using that for his good purpose. So, I mean, I wonder if um, some of us, maybe of uh, um, being in close quarters, being with people all the time, being at home a lot, it's possible that some people have realized, you know what? Um, my spouse and I could have a better relationship. And instead of kind of um, moving away from that and feeling like, well, there's not really anything we could do. God couldn't be at work in this time. We say, no, you know what, Lord, I think you're at work. And, and going to your spouse and say, hey, hey, what do you think about getting some counseling so that, so that our marriage can really flourish? I, I love you, I love where we're at, but I think it could be better. That would be an instance of having a bigger picture as opposed to looking at maybe just the circumstances. Or maybe you've realized that, gosh, you know what, um, my work has not been fulfilling. Um, I'm not, it doesn't help me to become a better person when I'm at home. And, and maybe it's time to start looking for a different type of a job or vocation. And instead of feeling, well, I'm just stuck, um, it's circumstance, I can't do anything about it. Just saying to the Lord, Lord, what might there be for me? And, and let me have a big picture faith of saying, what is the future possibly hold for me? Big picture faith. And then Paul goes on to, ask, to thank the Philippians for their support, for the money and supplies they've given, for their prayers. And then he says this great verse, verse 20. He says, I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but I will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. A couple really powerful statements in there. The first is he says, I'm not going to be ashamed, but I pray that I'll have sufficient courage. And, and that, that's a quality all of us need right now, right? We all need sufficient courage to make it through this coronavirus pandemic. We need sufficient courage to believe that there is more that God wants us to do in the future and that God even wants to use me right now, that we would have sufficient courage. But then he says, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. In, in the Greek, the way the, um, it's set up, it, it looks like this. It's to live, Christ, to die, gain. There's, there's no kind of verb in there. And so it really does open it up to, to translate it as that it's all about my life with you, Christ. It's all about Jesus. I mean, this is big picture. I mean, Paul has a big picture on things. He says, you know what? It would be much better for me to die because that's a gain. I get to be with Christ. I get to experience your glory firsthand. That would be amazing. But he says, you know what? I'm going to stay. And I'm going to stay and continue the ministry because God has more for me to do. And I'm going to stay as one who lives for Christ. That that is all that life is about. One commentator um, wrote about this verse, uh, to live as Christ, and said this. To live as Christ. To live means Christ. To live depends on Christ. To live honor Christ. The foundation, center, purpose, direction, power, and meaning of Paul's life is Christ. To live Christ. It means everything to Paul, and it needs to mean everything to us. 
in another one of his letters to a church, to the church of uh, the Galatians, he wrote this. It's a really well-known verse, Galatians 2.20, but he said, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I've been crucified with Christ. It, it means that we are to crucify our selfish, sinful self. That, that the part of us that is all wrapped up about myself, the part that is only concerned about myself, needs to die. And uh, I remember a professor in seminary said something really helpful about this passage because he says, that we are, you know, I've been crucified with Christ. And, and he said, you know what? Crucifixion is a slow, painful death. And when we think about crucifying ourself, it will be a slow, painful death. Paul, Paul recognizes this even. He might talk about that for me to live as Christ, but a little bit later on in Philippians, he'll say, you know what? I have not reached that point yet. There's still work to be done in me and, and for all of us, right? There still are parts of our lives that need to die. There are parts of my sinful life that needs to die, of my selfish life that needs to die. And it takes time. It's not going to happen quickly. And it can be extremely painful and there will be parts of that you, that you will grieve greatly, it will be very hard to do. But it's what God calls us to do, is to crucify ourself. And thus, we then can live differently. When you die to yourself and you live for Christ, you live differently. And that's what he says in verse 27. He kind of wraps up this, this little section and says, Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Hey, whatever happens, whatever's going on, conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. The, the gospel of Christ is where we experience grace and the forgiveness of God and the great love of God in our life. It's what changes us. It's what brings about transformation in our own lives. And thus to conduct yourself in a manner worthy of what you have received from God is that then you give that same grace, forgiveness, love to other people and that you live a gospel life. That's what it means, that we are dying to ourselves, we're living for Christ, and thus we live a gospel life. It's an amazing thing. So, I know it's very easy and it's natural to get caught up in our own circumstances. It's easy and it's so natural to just kind of look at ourselves and and even build a, a defenses around ourselves and, and protect ourselves. But, but Paul gives us a picture of what it's like to have big picture faith. To not become so caught up in the, in the circumstances and the difficulties and the lacks and the limitations of our life. But to say, take a step back and see what God might be doing beyond what you can see right now. That, that life doesn't revolve around me. And that I'm supposed to die to myself and live for Christ. So, uh, assignments for this week. Two continue from last week. One, keep reading the book of Philippians at least once, all the way through, every week. Secondly, keep memorizing that prayer in 1 Corinthians or, in Philippians um, verses 9 to 11 and pray that over yourself and uh, over our church and, and everybody else. And the third thing I want you to do, and this is going to be tough, 
is um, take some time this week and just with the Lord say, Lord, um, what what do you need to crucify in my life? What what is there in my life that just needs to be dealt with? And it, and it may take some time and it may be painful, but Lord. You know I need to deal with that. You know, is it um, is it pride? Is it um, greed? Is it jealousy? Um, is it unforgiveness? I, you know, I don't know. But but Lord, what is it that you want to work in my life? Because we want to be people who um, have a big picture faith and believe that God can do great things through us, even in the days that are difficult like they are today. Uh, let me pray for us. So Lord, um, thank you that you meet us right where we're at. I do pray that you would help us to learn um, how to uh, die to ourselves, how to engage in that really long and at times painful uh, process of, um, of dying to our selfishness and our sin. And, and show us, Lord, what it means to live for Christ. And help us to have a big picture, Lord. Help us in the, these days that are so difficult and it's, it can be so um, tight and narrow to have a bigger picture of what you're doing and how we can be a part of it. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. She 
Jesus, lover of my soul, Jesus, I will never let you go. You've taken me from the miry clay. You set my feet upon the rock, and now I know. Until the very end So Jesus Lover of my soul Jesus I will never let you go You're taking me From the miry clay You set my feet upon the rock And now I know Once more, I love you, and I need you. Though my world may fall, I'll never let you go. My Savior, my closest friend, I will worship you until the very end. Well, again, thanks for uh, joining us this morning. If you are, are watching this on Sunday morning at 10, uh, 11 o'clock, there'll be a Zoom call that you can jump on and we'll take communion together. And then we can um, get into groups, uh, breakout rooms, and, and uh, talk a little bit about the sermon and how you're doing and pray for each other. It's, it's a really great time to connect with others from our church. So I would um, really encourage you to do that. But, um, but for all of us today, I do pray that you will have a big picture faith, that you'll take a step back from the circumstances and that you'll see what God is doing in you and what God wants to do through you right now and also into the future. For all of us are needed for what God wants to do in his kingdom. God bless you. Thanks again for joining us and uh, we look forward to seeing you on the Zoom call.